Cato is an incredibly gifted and talented writer, and to have his work as the basis for the structure of this story was was an unbelievable blessing. It really began with a, a newspaper article that I uh, that I saw in the San Antonio paper where I live. Somebody had stolen the baby Jesus out of a crash, out of a manger scene. Who would steal a baby Jesus? And that, of course, at that uh, article, I, they didn't know. They just reported it missing. And they had a picture, and they had the pastor out in front. And, and uh, so I never did find out what happened to that one. But I had an idea what happened to this one. And that's really how the story was born. Tom Newman, the producer who purchased the rights to the Max Lucado book, Christmas Cross, called me up while I was still uh, employed by Sony. I'd like to see if Bill thinks this would be a good, good picture. So I overnighted it to Bill. And... Bill called me the very next day and he said, are you kidding me? This would be a great film. It's because of, of people like Tom Newman especially and then Bill and Penelope uh, who have really seen more in the story than I saw in the story. I'm very interested in telling the story of the 40-year-old journalist. Bill began to have more and more ideas, and he started to work with our writers and uh, began to interact with it. And next thing you know, I was like, no, you really get this story. and You just are very excited every time I talk, very animated and talk about it. I said, would you consider directing this picture? I immediately thought, because of my background, he meant produce the movie. And, he said, and I, so I said, you mean produce? And Tom said, no. I mean direct. Once you've got a script, you've got the idea, it's now bringing this all to life. And of course, sets and towns and settings and Christmas trees and all that are real necessary in a production called Christmas Child. But the characters that would make it work. We were very fortunate um, to have Stephen Curtis Chapman portray the character of the pastor. I'm actually playing Michael Curtis in the film, and he is the... Uh, Pastor Curtis, he's the pastor of Clearwater, I think it's Clearwater, a community church. Everything about this is is who I am, you know, it's a guitar-toting preacher, you know, which is kind of, you know, what I feel like I, I sort of am in real life anyway, so that was really easy. You a musician? Oh, I, I play at the church sometimes. Any good? Well, I don't like to brag, you know, but uh, my kids tell me I'm awesome. Stephen just brought an authenticity to the role of the pastor and really kind of became the pastor for the production. He thinks on deeper levels, you know, that, that this man that's a Christian singer is really... I love that he is everything that he says he is. What I love about this movie and what I love about the part that I get to play is that, you know, I get to communicate that and this whole film communicates that, that it's not about getting all the answers packaged and neatly, you know, with a bow wrapped around it for Christmas and say we have it all figured out, but it's more about you know, the message of the film is the God who came still comes. You know, I don't have all the answers. Boy, I sure don't have it all figured out. But yeah, I believe with all my heart, God loves us. The cast was really incredible. I was really fortunate um, to be able to, to work with such great actors. I play uh, Jack Davenport, uh, who's a central character in the movie theme within the script. It's a large theme for Jack, the character, and it's a large theme for me, which is trying to have it all about something. All my life I've told other people's stories. I'm going to be 40 on Christmas Eve. This time I'd like to know my own. Somebody gave me a call and said, well, we've got this script uh, that's based on a, a man that's in crisis at Christmas time. Uh, it has a lot to do with faith. As Jack you know, he's trying to come to terms with his own uh, adoption and, and just who he is and who his parents or his mother was or, you know, if he can find out that information, he's kind of wrestling with that. And Bill Moses so captured the essence of who Jack is that he made the journey, not necessarily with dialogue, but with his eyes, with the inner emotion, with his reactions. The issue of, of 
of a man coming to a certain age in his life and sort of going, okay, well, I'm, I'm about at the halfway point. What have I got to show? Who am I? What have I done? And has it really amounted to anything? It's pretty large. William Moses, who had many, many pages of dialogue, just so professional. He came to this project, gave us his heart, and so consistent. We only had a day and a half of rehearsal before we started shooting, and we made the picture in 21 days. So they, there wasn't a lot of time, uh, a lot of rehearsal time, and these actors just came together and worked like they had been in repertory for a number of years. Looks like it's time to go. Thank you for a wonderful party, Mr. Hunt. I have to commend you, Meg. Anyone that allows her husband to work as much as you do. Deserves an exceedingly large bonus, don't you think? <laughs> My name is Megan Follows, and I'm playing Meg Davenport. And I am the loving wife of Jack. And Jack's not very nice to me at the beginning of this film. And I'm uh, pregnant, but he doesn't know it. But we're not doing so well. What about what I need? What we need? I will take time off after Christmas. Do you know that even when you're here... What? I feel alone. Megan Fallows, this down-to-earth wife who is dealing with all these issues of marriage and a husband searching for himself, and yet somebody we wanted to embrace and, and take the journey with. Her attitude and, uh, of course, her acting were just so convincing. Can you pick up the phone? I'm the one that's stuck, man. I really need to find some answers. I'd love you to pick up the phone. The original piece didn't have near the drama between Jack and his wife that the book had. And then the movie or the film presentation has much more drama between Jack and his wife than the book does. So I think the story has really matured and it's, it's more realistic. You know, we just kind of came together with uh, a meeting of the minds and brainstorming um, about which characters would be interesting to include and how we could open the story up. 